And we've looked at research that shows that people that are low in vitamin D do get more viral, respiratory viral infections, or influenza anyway, that's been clearly demonstrated. Offered supplement to correct deficiency, 4,700 emissions, and most of them agreed to it. And of course, we also know that vitamin D deficiency predisposes towards depression, seasonal affective disorder. So uh, psychiatric patients, as all patients, as in all people, can benefit from from this so it's good to see that that was uh, that was done vast majority agreed to supplementation typically patients had uh, 5,000 to 10,000 units a day that's 125 micrograms to 250 micrograms and remember the UK government guideline I think is is it 400 a day now it's, it just makes it look completely laughable uh, and now some patients due to disease concerns were given 20,000 to 50,000 units a day that's uh, 500 micrograms to 1.25 uh, 1 milligrams, 1,250 micrograms. So really quite high daily doses um, to try and treat particular uh, diseases such as psoriasis and uh, rheumatoid arthritis, I think. Uh, no cases of vitamin D-induced hypercalcemia. Hyperhigh calcium in the blood, that's what people worry about. They had no cases. I think this is important to emphasize some most patients are on five to ten thousand a day some patients are on 20 to fifty thousand a day no complications at all none no complications at all reported in any of the patients a marked clinical improvement were three patients with psoriasis who had the higher dose marked clinical improvement no adverse reactions now analysis of 1400 uh, 418 inpatients that they looked at recently they were there long enough to develop blood levels of 74.4 nanograms a mil, so reasonably high. It showed a mean uh, vitamin D concentration level of 118.9 nanograms per mil. This would normally be considered high, but as we say, no adverse reactions. And the range in these patients was 74 to, 800, uh, 30 to 384. Now, here's the key thing. In these patients who had such high levels of uh, vitamin D, the blood calcium, the mean was uh, 9.6 milligrams per decilitre. And the range is uh, that the range went from 8.6 to 10.7. And the normal range is normally 8.5 to 10.5. So this is quite acceptable. Now, you do see variations in range a bit. Uh, I, I take my normal ranges from um, Davidson's Principle and Practice of Medicine. So um, I think we can be fairly sure that is the accurate normal range. So basically, we can say this is essentially within within range certainly not high enough to cause any problems now they also took a comparator group over the years of people that didn't take vitamin d uh, they had an average level of a uh, mean level of 27.1 so way way lower remember the average uh, vitamin d levels in the people uh, taking vitamin d were um 118.9 so that was the people taking vitamin d 118 uh, the people not taking vitamin D, it was uh, 27.1, so way, way lower. Now, what about their calcium? Well, it was 9.5. So the people on these huge doses of vitamin D, their calcium was 9.6, average, mean, which is okay. Uh, people not taking vitamin D, 9.5. So we can see basically it's the same. There's no statistical difference between those. Hi, this is Nell Solo. This is the second in a series on vitamin D. There are four different doctors and the series will go on over the next few weeks. If you have a loved one who could benefit from this information, please select one of these and send the link to them.